Welcome back guys to the channel. Uh, today I'm at home, I'm doing some editing and uh, watching uh, the Formula 1 Bahrain GP practice and qualification. Uh, so if you follow me on social media like Instagram and Facebook, you might have seen that I actually sold my old friend Don Vito and I also bought a new car to replace him. Uh, this video will be uh, take you through all of the steps on how I came to the conclusion that I wanted to change car and also what kind of cars I have been checking out and what car I ended up buying. So let's get rolling on this episode. What's up guys? Today I'm going down to Trelleborg uh, we're going to check out a new car for me. Uh, we've been using Don Vito now for almost four or five years. It's been working super well. I'm really satisfied with that car. I have nothing to complain about it. But due to the European Union's uh, new regulations uh, on emissions and stuff, makes it really hard for us with, to travel with that car through Europe because it's an 05 and uh, it's uh, just one year too old to meet the new standards. So. I'm thinking about maybe upgrading it to a newer one to uh, make sure we don't have any problems when uh, traveling through Europe in the future. Uh, so today I'm going to go down and look on a car, uh, check out the car that uh, I've been uh, watching, keeping an eye on for a while. Uh, it actually got sold, but the, se uh, the seller didn't go, uh, or the buyer didn't go through completely. So the car is back for sale. And as soon as I saw that, I called the seller and uh, today I'm meeting him up and checking out the car. So uh, I'm going to show you here when we got there. I have a three hour drive now. Uh, it's Sunday today uh, and uh, yeah, let's get down to Trelleborg and uh, check it out. Well, uh, that was kind of lucky, or I don't know, lucky, but uh, at least he was honest. Uh, right uh, when I had went up to the gas station, checked all over the car, packed the car, and uh, fueled it up, and I was just about to go out on the main road down to Malmö and uh, Trelleborg. Uh, the seller called me, and he actually told me that he wanted to, wanted to be honest with me, and. He told me that the car actually didn't have any AC in it, so <laughs> uh, that's kind of a deal breaker for me because uh, as I told you we're planning to go around Europe a lot and uh, during the hot summer days you definitely want some AC or air conditioner in the car. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, that's a bit of a bummer because I thought the car had a good specification but uh, We'll have to look on and uh, or look at uh, more cars. I know there's a car in uh, up in Stockholm that looks really good as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, the the hunt continues, and uh, I'm going to talk to the guy who wants to buy Don Vito and uh, see if we can prolong this maybe one week to get uh, some more space for me to look at cars before selling this. So. That's about it. So now I'm going to go home and I'm going to try to edit the edit some stuff on the computer and get some content out for you guys. So that's pretty much it for now. Uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Well, during the last few weeks, I've been trying to gain as much knowledge as possible about the new Vitos, the W447 chassis. I've been talking to everyone I know that works with them. I've been trying to talk with people that have been owning cars like that. And also uh, I've been talking a lot to V Hobil up in Örebro. And that's a shout out to uh, Arash and Fredrik who are helping me and uh, supporting me by answering all my stupid questions regarding these chassis and all of the options and the loading rates and the towing weights and all of that stuff. Uh, thanks for that because that helps me keep uh, feel safe during the process of buying a new car. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if I explained this, but the car that I'm looking for, or the car I was actually supposed to be looking at in Trelleborg, is a mixto. 
Uh, Mix2 means it's a Vito work truck, but instead of having just one single row of seats in the front, they actually move the middle wall back in the car and they actually add the second row of seats. This means you can either have a five-seater or you have a six-seater option, depending on which car you have. Uh, this is something that we want because during a lot of events that we're running uh, both in Sweden and Europe, we would like to run maybe go more than three people in the car. Every time we've been doing this in the past, we need to have a second car or we have to find someone else that's going to the event and have one of the guys go with them. Uh, this is of course costs money and makes it harder uh, when planning the trips. So that's one of the main things uh, that makes me want to change up Don Vito. Uh, so uh, after checking in a lot of car, test driving them and checking them out, uh, I actually uh, ended up talking to Arash and Fredrik up at Vehobil again. Uh, they actually had a car in stock, uh, which was a Vito Tour. Uh, a Vito Tour instead, that's not a mix though, it's still a Vito though, it has the same interior and stuff like that. The only difference is they don't have a middle wall, they removed it completely and they add a, a third row of seats. This means that the car can either be a 7 seat, 8 seat or 9 seat depending on the application you have ordered the car with. Uh, I actually never thought of these cars because uh, as you understand I need a luggage compartment to have all my tools and all of that stuff, all the spare parts and that things. Uh, but they actually had a car in stock that uh, was pretty interesting, it had really low mo mileage and a decent price note as well. Uh, however, when we started to look into this car a little bit more, I ended up turning it down because it was equipped with four-wheel drive and it also had um, no tow hook installed. So to get the car like I wanted it, I wanted, had to pay a pretty big, a lot of pretty big sum of money to get the tow hook installed by Mercedes-Benz and get the tow rating that I want for it because I need 2500 kilos on the tow hook to get uh, the whole uh, 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 yeah, the whole thing to work out because I need to load it pretty high and also I have to load the trailer to get the weight to be as legal as possible. Uh, but uh, this kind of opened up my eyes to these cars because I haven't really uh, considered them because as I told you I need uh, the trunk space but it's still the same car, it's the same engine, it's the same drivetrain, everything like that. It just sounds cancelled better, it has the full interior in through the car and it's, uh, yeah, it's just equipped with another row of seats. Uh, this is also good for uh, when I'm supposed to sell the car later, when I owned it or in the end uh, of my uses of the car, it's easier to sell it because then you can sell it to maybe a family or something like that because it's a multi-purpose vehicle as they call them and it's uh, easy because you can just remove one seat or uh, add them back and you can use them as uh, any way you like. Uh, however, this car uh, was uh, the same interior as I told you. Uh, but the thing that opened up my eyes about this car is that the, the cost of these cars are actually lower than a Mixto and that is probably because the Mixto uh, is often bought by uh, companies and owned for three years. Uh, after three, three years they often go to another company or smaller business that buy them and use them for three years too, uh, three more years I mean. Uh, that means that the price is kept up pretty high because it's still a valuable car to the smaller companies. However, the, the Tourer, they drop their value pretty high because they usually go from a taxi company uh, and then be sold to a private person, like a civilian like me. And that means that the price drop is bigger and they are therefore cheaper. Uh, so when starting to look at those cars, they can, became a pretty good option for me. You could get a Vito Tour 116 for a decent price and I could rebuild it to fit my needs and still get a proper car. Uh, uh, the 116 is a 160 horsepower car, uh, by 119 the biggest one is a 190 horsepower car. It's the same engine, same turbo, same everything, it's just a different software installed in the car. So my idea is to buy a 116 then optimize it to get the same power as a 119. Uh, but when, 
when I was started to look at this, I actually uh, talked to them again, and then we came around and started talking about another car, and that's the uh, Mercedes V Class. Uh, I had definitely not been thinking about these cars because they're way out of my price, price range, I thought. But when I started to look into tourers, the V-Class of course popped up and I started to look that some of the v class actually have the high tow rate that I want. And it also has um, a lower price than I expected. It's actually cheaper or at the same price as a mixed tow. So, What's the difference between a V-Class and a Tora, you might ask? Well, there's a big difference. Because V-Class is a Mercedes option of a luxury van. This car has uh, like a regular E-Class interior. It has the infotainment system. It has the, everything that you want. It has even more sound cancelling. It has uh, the big stereo system. It has the like mood lights in the car and uh, they have the good uh, uh, high beam uh, or what's it called like the headlights or led as standard it has so much more uh, equipment than the vitos and the car is completely different i've been driving one uh, way back on a wedding and i really love the car but i never imagined i would be able to own one uh, so I started to check around for V-classes and uh, by just a coincidence I took the chance to call up to Motonova in Skövde uh, where my uh, brother-in-law uh, Benny works. Uh, I just asked him if he knew that they had any cars in the warehouse, in their warehouse that has been used. And by accident they actually had uh, just received one V-Class 220, that's the same as the 116, it's a 160 horsepower version. They actually uh, bought it in like one day before I called, so uh, after talking to them, getting some pictures from their seller, Johan, uh, I ended up being really interested in the car and decided on uh, going up the week after and check it out. So uh, we went up and checked it out and this is how the car looked. So the car looked really good, we had a test drive, I had my dad there that uh, checked out the car. Uh, it uh, looked really good, we actually found out that the insurance was lower on the uh, multi-purpose vehicles because they're registered as a regu regular, regular car instead of the, it's like a light truck, the other ones that has the middle wall and the truck comp compartment behind. It has lower tax. Uh, because it's an environmentally friendly car compared to my old one. So uh, everything looks good. Uh, the tow hook was actually 2000 kilos on this one, but we actually managed to uh, get it clear that we know that the car can be equipped or uh, what's it called, re registered with a higher tow towing rate to 2500 kilos instead. So the car fit all of my ideas and it had the right color and everything was good it had some stuff to fix it like the brakes were a bit worn out and the tires uh, were a bit worn out but these are still things that i could fix myself and uh, that was one way of getting me to get the price lower so uh, we ended up that uh, we were uh, we talked about the deal, we, I got it to a price that I wanted to have it and uh, it's actually the, one of the cheapest cars uh, that I ever <laughs> actually have been watching uh, during the whole time that I was checking these cars. It's actually as cheap as the car that didn't ha even have AC, but this has it all. So uh, now uh, we have decided on the deal and now I need to make sure that we get uh, Don Vito sold. Uh, so during this week we're going to uh, uh, get the car ready and uh, yeah, make it ready to be picked up by Albert and we're trying to make this uh, uh, sync as well as possible so the idea is that I go up to Kövde and he's taking the night train down for northern Sweden we meet up there and uh, do the deal and after I get the money from that buy I will be able to go up and uh, close the deal on the new car so uh, 
This is what happened. back in the garage and uh, today as uh, you may have seen the last time uh, there's a lot of glue stuck to the car after we removed all of the uh, logos from the car and uh, today I visited the uh, car care products and uh, they supplied me with some good stuff to make that go away uh, so the thing we're going to try today is uh, glue tech uh, this is a product that will as it's as you probably understand, will help me remove the residues from the from the stickers. So yeah, uh, we're gonna put that on, and let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna see how good it is. So let's go. day or at least a weird one for me uh, because right now I'm riding in the, what I think will be the last ride in the Don Vito uh, I've been owning this car for uh, almost six years and I've been uh, driving it for 80,000 kilometers it's uh, been taking me to so many great events and uh, uh, different things around Europe and uh, it's uh, I'm kind of a guy who gets quite attached to my cars and uh, this is definitely one of them because this is my first uh, van instead of the small truck that was called Baghdad before. Uh, so the car has treated me super well. Uh, I'm really happy about the car and uh, uh, I know it's a super solid car but uh, right now I have taken the decision of upgrading it to a newer car and uh, hopefully I'm doing the right decision. Uh, so right now I'm heading to Kovde where I'm going to meet up with Albert Hegbo. Uh, he's also a drifter from Sweden. Uh, he's taking the night train from uh, northern of Sweden down to Kovde. So hopefully he's uh, satisfied with the car and uh, everything goes well and uh, we can uh, do a deal today. Uh, if everything goes well I will also go uh, from when I sold this car go up to uh, Motonova in uh, Hovde and uh, pick up my new car so it's quite an exciting day uh, I know uh, it's gonna be uh, pretty hard to see this car go but uh, I know it's uh, better things to come so yeah let's go to Hovde and meet up with uh, Albert and uh, hopefully sell Don Vito Ja, många tack. Det här kommer vi vara guld. Har du nöjd nu? Ja, det hoppas jag. Du tror Får vi se om den håller 100 mil, en mil hem. 101 mil, ja, det är nog klara. Ja, men det är nära. Ja, nästa gård. Den är ju van att vara på vägen. Ja. Så det här blir nog jävligt bra till nästa år att dra med. Tror vi. Ja, snart... tusen tack för en bra affär. Kommer du snart bli uh, märsa för det här? <laughs> ja, vi får se. Så 
So I'm officially not the owner of Don Vito anymore. I'm really thankful for the good deal between me and Albert. Uh, I know you will be happy with the car in the long run and I will have a special uh, place in my heart with Don Vito because that's the car who took me and the CLK to every event during the last five to six years. And uh, enough talking about that. It's time to think forward. This is my new car and check it out. Well, there it is, my new car, uh, Mercedes V-Class 220 from 2016. I'm super stoked about the car, it still feels like a bit of a dream to me. I can't really comprehend that I have a nice car like that. But it takes a while and I'm sure I will get used to it. We have a lot of plans for the car, uh, how we're going to rebuild it and how we're going to adapt it to fit our race program. Uh, but that's something for a future episode and I will make sure to cover that in the future. So one of the last things I want to wrap this episode up with is that I'm getting a lot of comments uh, talking about uh, how I should get more attention for my channel and more my content. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about this is, and I know a lot of you guys are already doing this, but if you enjoy the content, it's really important that you hit the like button, you subscribe to the channel and you also share it with your friends. Because if you do stuff like this, this is how my channel will grow and this is how I keep motivated on doing this. Because this isn't something I make any money off. I do it for you and from the recognition of you guys enjoying what I do. So I hope you understand what I'm coming at and uh, that's it for today. I'm going to try to get this video out to you as soon as possible and uh, yeah, that's it for today. So thank you. Have a good one. Bye.